everybody. Welcome to Video Notes 8.3, our last one of the chapter. Got a guest singer. See if you know him. All right. Uh, make sure you can do all of these things for this chapter. All right. There's a lot of explaining and a lot of calculating, so get ready for it. We'll keep practicing, though. Okay. Here we go. Um, so, steam burns cause more damage than hot water burns. What? So, let's look at a cooling curve. Okay. If we have this, this, we'll stop right there. Remember, the cooling curve goes all the way down. But say this is a gas, and this is a gas turning to a liquid. What's the difference? Okay. What's the difference? Well, if we have just a... Uh, Okay, we'll put the liquid on there. If we have just a liquid on there, okay, maybe it'll get burned because it's at a high temp. All right, so here's your temp. But um, if you have a steam burn, then what happens is that you have something that's a gas. As the gas cools down, all right, yeah, the temperature decreases. Same with the liquid, okay? All that heat goes into you when you're uh if you get come in contact but what happens with the gas is it also changes phase okay so when a gas changes phase this heat heat from the phase change also goes into your skin so say you get um your arm is in a gas then the gas is at a high temperature okay so it's got a lot of heat because it's at high temperature and the gas can condense so the heat from that phase change also goes into your arm. Ouch is right. Okay. So steam burns can cause more damage than hot water burns. All right. Here's um, something else you need to know that the delta H of vaporization, and this is a gas, I'm sorry, a liquid to gas change, is usually bigger than the delta H of fusion. The fusion change is a solid to liquid phase change. Okay. Um, so why? So why is this bigger? Oh look, there's bigger. This is bigger than that because um, if you want to turn this liquid into this gas, all of the forces of attraction between these molecules have to be overcome. It takes a lot of energy to make them independent of each other. So the delta H of the turning the liquid into the gas is going to be higher because you have to break all of the bonds that are holding the liquid together, okay, as a liquid and turn it into a gas. How is that different? Well, if you take if you take the solid right here, okay, so you got forces of attraction between these particles, right? If you want it to melt, you have to um, spread it out so that those forces are overcome. But they're still these particles are pretty close together, okay? So if you want to boil something, it takes more energy per gram to boil it because you have to overcome any force of attraction to get independent molecules. If you want to melt something, you have to overcome the forces holding the molecules together in solid form, but they're still pretty close in liquid form, okay? So it takes less energy to melt it than it does to boil it, okay? So what does boiling really mean? Well, here's a real definition of boiling. Write this down. Boiling is actually the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure, okay? So liquid, right? What's above the liquid? A gas. Atmospheric pressure pushing down on the liquid. As these molecules from the liquid evaporate, they turn into vapor. These are, and these vapor pressure, these molecules also exert force on the surface of the liquid. So when would any of these be able to turn into a gas? Well, when the amount of vapor from the liquid is causing enough pressure to equal the pressure that was already pushing down from the atmosphere, that's when boiling occurs. Okay, so here's the real definition of boiling. Ask me about it, we'll talk about it. Normal boiling point is what you're used to. The temperature at when, which the vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure, but that atmospheric pressure is 1 atm. So normal boiling point is defined as the temperature when the vapor pressure of the liquid is equaling the atmospheric pressure, but the atmospheric pressure is defined as 1. Okay, hey, that's standard pressure, 1 atm. So that's when the normal boiling point is measured. Okay, so what does it mean? A high pressure means a higher temperature is needed to boil. Okay, so what do we do in a pressure cooker? Right, there's um, high pressure pushing down on the liquid. And so then it's going to take more, it's going to 
take more pressure, more vapor pressure from the liquid to equal that pressure so the boiling point will go up. Okay. What if you take this lid off? Would you open a lid? Oh, look. Open, right? Open the lid. Well, then the pressure above the liquid decreases. And so then the liquid could boil at a lower temperature because it doesn't need as much energy to have the same pressure as the vapor. Okay. So, oh, look, some diagrams. Air pressure is pushing down. Here's the molecules that have already turned into a gas. Those are the vapor pressure. So when the pressure from the air and the vapor are equal to each other, then any molecule in the liquid can turn into a gas and over, and then that gas can leave. Okay, that's boiling. Okay, how does it change? Well, look, we're up in the airplane. Uh, water boils at 79 degrees Celsius. Why is that? Because there's less air pressure on water up there. There's even less air pressure in this little house right here. Okay, water would boil at about 90 degrees Celsius because there's less pressure pushing down on water. Okay, at sea level, we're about one atmosphere pressure. That's when the uh, boiling point of water equals 100 degrees because the air pressure is 1 atm. Okay, so can we um, quantify this? Well, look, there's three different liquids here, okay? And this line represents their vapor pressure. That's the pressure that the liquid is exerting, okay? So here's the vapor of water. Oh, those are the water pressures. Here's regular air pressure. So water hitting the surface, water gas hitting the surface is causing the vapor pressure. Okay, you can see that at a uh, low temperature, oh look, here's zero degrees, and um, zero pressure, okay, water has a low vapor pressure. Water's vapor pressure increases as temperature increases, and um, when you get to this, this is um, in kilopascals, but 101.3 kilopascals equals one atm of pressure. So this is called the normal boiling point. And look what for water, what we have, okay? At 100 degrees Celsius, when the pressure pushing down on water equals the pressure from water itself, that's when it's gonna boil, okay? So which one of these four liquids has the highest boiling point at 1 atm? Well, it looks like ethanoic acid because that'd be somewhere between, um, like here's 120, all right, a little less than one ton or 20 degrees Celsius. Which one has the lowest boiling point? It looks like propanone does, okay? Now, notice they can change a little bit as air pressure changes. Um, that means the vapor pressure of the liquid's gonna change. Okay, but here's one atmosphere. So when does water have one atmosphere pressure? At 100 degrees, okay? When does ethanoic acid have one atmosphere pressure? At about 100 uh, let's say 118 degrees, so that's going to be its boiling point. Okay, here's another kind of graph. This is called um, the phase diagram. Okay, phase diagram. Phase diagram. Okay. And it's a little different because we have pressure and temperature going on here. Okay, and so look, in this area of the graph, the substance is solid, there's liquid, there's gas. So what does this line represent? Well, it represents the phase change from liquid to gas. So from liquid to gas, or gas to liquid, here's the phase change. What do we call that? Well, if it's going towards gas, it's boiling, okay? If it's going towards the liquid, it's condensing. Okay. So um, we have a temperature and a pressure in which the li this particular liquid condenses all along this line, or boils all along this line. What about this? This is a solid to liquid phase change, so this must be the um, melting point of the substance all along that line is melting. Anywhere on this line is melting because it's going from, so that's melting. If it's going that way, it's freezing, okay? Hey, so what's going on down here? Well, this is solid turning directly to a gas. So this is, if it's going this way, it's subliming, going directly to a gas. If it's going that way, it's depositing directly from a gas to a solid. So you can see that what does the state of matter depend on? It depends on the temperature and the pressure. Okay, what's going on here? It's called the triple point. Triple point. Guess what can happen at the triple point? At the triple point, you have all three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, in equilibrium. That means turning into each other at equal rates. Okay, so you have all three phases present at the triple point, and this happens to be negative 56.4 and 
one one atmospheres for this particular substance okay so this is one substance solid liquid and gas form up here supercritical fluid is when you have um you can't distinguish the liquid from the gas okay they have the same density so you can't distinguish the liquid from the gas so it's a kind of crazy point there okay so here's some more phase diagrams this happens to be the one for water if you look here's the triple point for water it's just 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 above zero degrees celsius and it is less than one atmosphere pressure but look at this this is one atm so this is one atm we're talking about um, the pressure def definition of normal boiling point when is the liquid going to turn into a gas at 100 degrees celsius for for h2o all right when is um, at one atmosphere pressure when is a solid going to turn into liquid notice it's at zero degrees for H2O okay so um, what state of matter would you have at negative 20 degrees in one atmosphere okay so negative 20 degrees would be here one atmosphere pressure you'd have solid H2O okay but what if the pressure was really low like 0.5 uh, atmospheres pressure well you'd, you'd actually at negative 20 degrees with no pressure you'd have H2O as a gas Okay. Hey, this is carbon dioxide. Notice you have solid liquid and gas carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is sometimes known as dry ice. Why? Because if you notice, at one atmosphere of pressure, at negative 78 degrees Celsius, carbon dioxide goes directly from solid to a gas. Okay. Yeah, can carbon dioxide be a liquid? Uh-huh. At a higher pressure, okay, and higher temperature, you can get carbon dioxide to be a liquid. But because of its weak intermolecular forces, carbon dioxide is most often a gas at normal pressures or lower. Okay, um, you can get carbon dioxide to be a solid. Okay, you got to give it, put it at high pressure. But once you put it into normal atmospheric pressure, it's going to sublime right away. Okay, so notice this. This is what we talked about. All of the different what I talked about. You're just listening. Okay, so um, all of the different states of matter. So this line is the freezing melting line because it's the difference between solid and liquid. Here's a condensing, vaporizing, or boiling line, liquid to gas. Triple points when you have all three states of matter, same um, temperature and pressure. Deposition sublimation is solid turning to gas or gas turning right to solid. And it all depends on pressure and temperature. Oh look, here's another one. What does the M and the B stand for? Well, the M and the B stand for normal melting and normal boiling. Why? Because it's at one atmosphere. Okay. And look, liquid to gas, that's boiling. Solid to liquid or liquid to solids, freezing and melting. Okay. So we actually measure melting and boiling points at one atmosphere pressure. And those are what's on your handy dandy pink data table. All right. It looks like we've done everything now. Ice skating depends on this okay it happens when you're ice skating well you're putting high pressure on the ice okay so you turn the ice into a liquid and then you could skate on the ice so oh, look at that ice skate yay all right but heat miser would not want you to be doing that so to review make sure you can draw a heating curve make sure you know temperature stays constant flatline phase change evaporation is not equal to boiling Know your specific heats, okay? C for water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. Okay. Calorimetry is how we calculate heat changes. Know your delta H from your delta H vape. Math is fun, you better believe it. Heating curves tells the equations. Each line segment gets a calc. Five calcs. Steam burns release more energy because they have the phase change built in. All right, make sure you can do all that. And have a great day.